So here's the Dana 44 axle with some uh, serious damage on the ceiling surface there. And so we're going to have to uh, put a speedy sleeve on this to clean to uh, make it seal again. The last guy that was in there damaged this shaft pretty well, trying to get the old bearings off. And he really did a number on the, uh, on the uh, where, where, you, where you press the bearing on. It's got chisel marks all over it. He must have got the uh, retainer on crooked when he tried to press it on. He must have done this all with a hammer. First thing is take the caliper off. Next. Turn off. Take off the parking brake. Then we can pull off the, the uh, rotor drum. Rotor, drum, rotor, drum. I don't know. Rotor drum. Whatever it is. Then we have to loosen up all four of these retaining nuts. This particular axle has the nuts in the back instead of through here. So we just have to put a wrench on the back side and loosen it up that way. Next we'll get the wheel speed sensor out of the way. This next part is really pretty easy. You just take a slide hammer you only have to tap on it because the only thing really holding it in is the uh, outer edge of the seal. And so it doesn't take much force, but this just makes it super easy to pull out. And just a few taps and this thing will come out. Let's see how this goes. Well, all right, let's just do this. Okay, it's out. So I take back what I said about it being a few light taps. We'll need a new seal, but to get a new seal on there, we will need to cut off the retainer and the bearing. Next thing we need to do is pull this race out. So we've got our slide hammer set up to remove the race. Three jaw puller. Expand this out to uh, lock them in, and this should be pretty easy. Alrighty. The next thing we have to do is cut off the bearing retainer, and we'll have to cut the bearing too. Just don't hit the uh, ceiling area and try not to hit the shaft there. Okay, now we're most of the way through, and there's just a little bit left, just a little bit left there. So I didn't hear it crack, so we'll give it a little assistance to crack it. And we'll give it another cut on the back side of it just to uh, help it along the way, and make it come off easier. Checking to see if I can rotate it. 
If so, it might have been cut enough to break it free. Let's see what it does. Yeah, that's that's good enough. Now we can slide this off of there. Now notice I'm not hitting the shaft. I'm just hitting the ring here. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. Just tap this a little bit right here. Flip it around. Tap it again. Back. Tap it. Container's off. Now we have to do the bearing. Let's find where we uh, started cutting into it. Right there. And we'll finish cutting through the rest of this bearing here. Might as well get this ring off of here. That one's separated on that side. We'll have to separate the other side. Here goes the bearings. Now we need this off. So we'll just cut this on the edge again and be very careful not to hit where the seal goes. For this part, I need a smaller diameter cutoff wheel. This will work great. See if this is any loose at all. Not loose enough yet. Oops. See if this is loose enough yet. I want to cut it deeper just to see if that'll help. Let's see if we can crack it too. They get rotated. Let's see if it comes off. There it goes. And then the seal comes off and the retainer. And the last guy before me did a lot of damage there. Damage the sealing surface there too. And there's some damage right there on the sealing lip area. And so this is gonna require a speedy sleeve. Look at what the last guy did to this thing. 
Look at all that damage. That damage on the ceiling surface will make it leak. That's that's going to be a leak. That will not seal. You'd have to smooth that out or put a sleeve, speedy sleeve on it. But if you go too small in diameter, then you see it won't seal. All right, let's see what this differential boil looks like. Whoa, that's uh, get some uh, stuff on the magnet there. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some 600 grit sandpaper and clean up this ceiling surface here. I can feel those uh, damage marks on the uh, sandpaper as I as I turn it, and uh, so those, if there's this, if there is a little indentation on the ceiling surface, it's not going to seal. No, from experience. I did this on a crankshaft once before. There's a very small indentation right on the ceiling surface, and that was enough to make it leak pretty badly. It's looking a little better there. I'll keep doing this, but then definitely going to put the sleeve on it. All right. Next, I'm going to take some uh, brake cleaner. I'm going to clean up the ceiling surface, make sure there's no uh, grit from sanding, no oil on it. And then I'm going to uh, put some RTV black on the ceiling surface and on the speedy sleeve. So here's the uh, speedy sleeve I'm going to use. It's a 99187. It comes with an installation tool, this cap, which I have modified so that it'll slide over the shaft and be able to install the, the seal, or sorry, not the seal, the sleeve. Here's the sleeve. I'm going to use the installation tool to press this down onto the shaft. And since uh, this installation tool is a little bit flimsy, I've taken the old, the old retaining ring and I've sanded out the inside of it to make it a bigger diameter so it'll fit, uh, fit over the shaft and then it'll contact this uh, installation tool and we'll be able to press on the seal hopefully pretty easily. So once again, I'm going to use a little bit of brake cleaner here on this uh, in, on the ceiling or the inside surface of this uh, speedy sleeve so that when I put the RTV black on the inside surface of this there won't be any grease or oil residues there so that it will uh, seal and not leak through underneath the speedy sleeve. Now if you notice on the uh, instructions uh, for installing the speedy sleeve it says on number four if the groove does not require filling, apply a light layer of non-hardening sealant to the inside diameter surface of the sleeve. This always happens. You go to use your RTV black. I'm going to squeeze it. Alright, I'm putting some sealing or some RTV black on the sealing surface here. And then I'll put some on the uh, sleeve. Okay, now the seal, I mean the sleeve, slides over the top. Careful not to hit the edges, just hit it a couple times, oh well. It's kind of like that operation game. Okay, there it is, ready to go on. And we have the install tool, goes on top of it like that. And then we have my modified retainer. 
Okay, so here it is in the press. I'm just gonna use my press because that's easy to make it go straight. And sliding that seal down. That kind of feels like it bottomed out. Well, let's see what it did. I actually got it right on, just barely right on the right spot it looks like. Alright, for assembly, very first thing we have to do is put the uh, retainer assembly on. And then we're going to grease up the ceiling surface just a little bit. That's a little too much grease there. I'll wipe some of this off. Got a good amount of grease all the way around. Take your 9912 seal. From, from National and it's got a note in there it says that the uh, oil seal incorporates a special expandable outer diameter feature and no installation tools required there's no interference fit between the outer diameter and the bore until until you clamp this thing down and compress that seal in when you compress this seal it expands that right there so if you ever have to pull this thing out you need a new seal and new bearings because this seal isn't going to come off until you cut off the retainer and cut off the bearing. So now that we've got uh, some oil, or sorry, no, some grease all around this seal here, it has to go in and the spring side of that seal always faces inward. This is kind of like the game operation where you slide it down without hitting the edges and the alarm has been going off on the game and I just lost my turn because I touched the edge but oh well not a big deal now we get down to this point and be careful on how we install the seal and now we have the seal installed on the ceiling surface. There it is. Next thing we need to do is press on the bearings. Set 10, store brand Set 10 AZ. There's a taper on the bearing. The, the pointy side of the taper goes towards the inside of the axle. So there's the outside edge, here's the inside edge. So it points inward, so that line is going to be down towards the outside. So your taper is going to be going towards, from outer towards the inner, like this. And that's the way we want to, want to set it, right there. So we set this on the shaft there, and then we want to take our retainer, this holds your axle in while you're driving. And this thing looks like there is it's uh, symmetrical. And so all we have to do now is press that down to there. Okay, I have it all set up on the press, ready to press in the bearing. And here we go. I need another spacer. Well, it just so happens that I had an extra spacer from when I filed out the inside of it to fit for the uh, speedy sleeve installation. And now we're gonna press the bearing the rest of the way on, along with the retainer all at the same time. I can see the last guy that was in here did not have the proper tools. He scratched up all inside of here trying to get the race out. All it takes is a three jaw slide puller hammer, slide hammer, and there you go. You know, you can slide that 
bring that right out of there. But uh, here's the uh, assembly going back in. I've got my wheel speed sensor out of the way right there. Tighten up each of these four nuts on the back side of this retainer. Tighten them down till they contact the uh, housing and do a quarter turn on every single one. Just it's easy to keep track going clockwise, that's fine, you know, as long as it's like a small amount each time. Quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, and just keep going. Quarter turn each until it's completely seated and then you torque it to the uh, spec. And if you had a sharp eye, you'd say, hey, you're missing something there in your right. I like that. Pokayoke it means you can't install it wrong. Now I'm missing my screws. Where did I drop those? I'm always missing things. Dropping them. Oh, there they are right in front of me. At this point, you need to lift up a little bit to get this in the bearing back in there. Then This is most of the way in. The last little bit, you can see right here in the top between these two, there's a little bit of a gap. That will be pressed in when we tighten the screws or the nuts. You're gonna watch me struggle getting these uh, brake pads in or shoes. spring to install. Then we have to go quarter turn on all of these bolts. Every one gets a quarter turn all the way around. Which direction was I going? I was probably going the wrong way because I'm looking at it backwards. No, you guys never do that, do you? Never turn it the wrong way when you're going at it backwards, huh? All right, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And this one, I just have to count the number of 
clicks on my 12 point ratchet, or not the ratchet, box wrench. Three out of 12 is a quarter turn. You get the gist of it. All right, so I'm looking up the torque specs for the rear axle. Axle bearing retainer plate nuts, 45 foot-pounds. So that's what I'll torque these guys to on the back side there. So, hey, this wrench is, oh man, will it really fit? Oh man, let's see if I can fit it this way. Dana. Nope. Not that direction. Oh man. How stuck is it now? I just got it in there and I won't come out. Uh. Seriously. Oh. Right. It'll only fit in certain directions. That being one of them. All right, 45 times 12 is 540. And so 540 inch pounds. There's uh oh, I hit that thing. Oh come on man. Seriously. I think that's a 12 point. 540 about. I need my one inch extension. Of course. Or 50. Why did I put these on there? So I don't lose them. And now I need to adjust the parking brake. This drum's gonna go on and it's going to slide very freely without any rubbing on the drum or on the drum brakes, parking brake. So I need to tighten this up. Still not tight enough. In case you're wondering, this is not a self-adjusting parking brake. So you're gonna have to probably just pull the plug from the back side while the wheel's on, turn it till it rubs. But since the wheel's off, this is just as easy. So if you turn this clockwise from the top, that's tightening it up. I got it a little too tight. That just barely, barely hits it. Let's go, let's back off just one or two. 